In this week's Technique Tuesday video, I'll demonstrate how you can easily fix a sweater where the neck and shoulders stretch out and slide down your arms. As always, if you'd like to jump right to a specific point in the video, there are direct links down in the description. This is a swatch that simulates a sweater that was knit from the bottom up, but the technique I'm gonna show you today works for top-down sweaters as well. Um, what I did in this swatch was that rather than binding off the shoulders and seaming them or doing a three needle bind off, I grafted them. And so the stitches go smoothly across the top of the shoulder. They look really nice. And here at the, at the neck, instead of binding off the front of the neck and then and at the back of the neck, I left those stitches live so that when I did pick up stitches to work the ribbing, I picked up only along the diagonal and the vertical here, and then I could just work across these stitches, pick up stitches here, and then work across the live stitches in the back. Now the result of this is that, that the shoulders and the neck are just as stretchy as the rest of the fabric. The problem with having the shoulders and the neck be just as stretchy as the rest of the fabric is that the entire weight of the sweater hangs from your shoulders and the back of your neck. The front of the neck can provide some support, but often um, that you might have a V-neck, you might have a cardigan, you have something like that. So you can't always rely on the front of the neck offering any support. So it's really these horizontal bits, spans of stitches here at the shoulders and across the back of the neck that provide all of the structure for your sweater. So this stretchiness that you might have at your shoulders and back of the neck, if you haven't done any sort of bind off, can be exacerbated if the neck is particularly wide. So the closer the neck opening is to your shoulders, the more likely it is that the stretchiness or the width of the opening is going to cause the sweater to just stretch and want to slide down your shoulders. So you'll be wearing it and you'll keep hiking your shoulders up around your neck and you'll be a adjusting this and it, it won't feel good. So what I'm going to do is show you how you can use slip stitch crochet across the back of the neck and at the shoulders and really anywhere that you need extra structural support in your sweater. So I like to start with the back of the neck first and do the slip stitch crochet across the back of the neck and then Try it on and see if that is enough. Is that enough support? Um, does it feel too tight? Is it still too loose? Um, and then also, if you want to add shoulder support, start at the neck and then work your way toward the shoulders. Some sweaters uh, have raglan sleeves, and so you, instead of having a defined um, shoulder that ends and with the sleeves starting at those shoulders, the shoulders, the raglan seams come out like this and so you might find that you want to do some slip stitch down those um, seams as well or maybe across the top somewhere. You can experiment and see what it is that works best in your particular situation. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow the path of these purl bumps that are just under the knit column so I can follow those all the way over to the, to the start of, of the collar at the back of the neck. To get started, you do not need a slip knot. You hold the yarn tail in your right hand, insert the crochet hook underneath it, and pull a loop of yarn through that first purl bump. Then go to the next purl bump, pull the yarn through. So now you've got two loops on your crochet hook and you pull the first one through the second. From now on, you will insert underneath a purl bump, grab a loop and pull through both loops. I'm almost at the halfway point at the back of the neck. And so let's look at the difference between what I have. So here is what the neck is right now where I haven't worked the slip stitch. It's very stretchy. And over here where I have worked the slip stitch, there is some give to it, 
but not like that. So this is what's going to provide that support. Now I'm using a contrast color here so that you can see what I'm doing. And if I, if I turn this over, you can maybe see the, see it peeking through a little bit between the stitches. If I use the same color, if I use the same yarn I used for my project or a color that's very close to it, that's not going to show on the back side. So at this point, I've gone pretty much all the way across the neck. And what I would do at this point is um, break the yarn, is break the yarn and just do a few uh, chain stitches of crochet. So you're not going through the fabric anymore. You're just doing some chains and let that hang on the inside. You could even uh, pull the tail through like this so that it's not going to uh, ravel and try it on and wear it for a while and see if that's enough stability or not. You may decide that you need to, you've tightened it too much or you want to tighten it a little bit more, um, but, but wear it around and see if, if that has done the job, uh, if you like the way the back of the neck is. And then you can do the same thing along the shoulder seams in each direction if you feel like you need it. So this is a sweater I knit recently and the neck is quite wide and it has raglan uh, sleeves. And I ha have been finding that the, the neck one, and it's a very stretchy yarn, so the neck has been wanting to pull sideways and the sleeves are pulling down. So I, even though I bound off for the back of the neck before I picked up stitches, I felt like I wanted to have some more stability. So this is a bigger ridge than what you're going to see in, in the example that I just gave you because I already had a bind off chain here. So I um, marked the, the two locations where I wanted to run the chain and I put it in there, I tried it on, I didn't feel like it did anything. So what I did here, because I had all of the locations of where I had bound off um, marked with the bind off chain, I picked up with the slip stitch uh, every, uh, one for one for five stitches and then I skipped one and then I did one for one for five and then I skipped one. You might want to pick up in a, in a similar ratio or skip some just to maybe possibly draw things in a little bit more. You wouldn't want to draw things in too much because then they start to look gathered. Um, so I've been living with this. I was wearing it yesterday afternoon to see how I liked it. I think I like it. But I think the next thing that I'm going to do is to add some stability um, along the top of uh, the shoulder right here uh, to, to help that because I've only brought the chain all the way here. So the next thing that I'm going to do is across the top of the shoulder and see how that helps. After I finished filming the overhead portion of this video, I applied crocheted slip stitch across the tops of the raglan sleeves and also along the raglan decrease lines on the front and back of the sweater. Now this is an oversized sweater with a wide neck, so there's lots of room for it to sit off kilter. But now that I've stabilized the neck and shoulders, it's staying put. I'm going to leave those crochet chains hanging on the inside of the sweater for the rest of the day just to make sure I have fixed the problem as best I can before I weave in the ends. What I love about this solution is that it doesn't require ripping out any of my knitting. And if the solution isn't quite right, it's easy to rip out the crocheted slip stitch and redo it. Not all fit problems at the neck and shoulders can be fixed with crocheted slip stitch. There could be other issues such as a lack of shoulder or neck shaping or neck shaping that's incompatible with the type of collar the sweater has. Diagnosing a problem is the first step to fixing it. If you find my videos helpful and would like to show your appreciation, you can buy me a coffee on Kofi.com. If you have any comments or questions about today's video or suggestions for videos you'd like to see in the future, you can leave those down in the comments below or join the discussion in my Ravelry group, Rocks Rocks. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.